Does this $130 rugged smartphone offer a pleasant day-to-day -day user experience? Let's find out. This is the Uliphone Armor X12 Pro smartphone. It comes in three colors, orange, like the one I have here, lime green and all black. In terms of size, this is a 5.45 inch screen, 720 by 1440p, and it weighs 257 grams. It comes with a 4860 milliamp hour battery, USB type C port, and it supports 10 watt charging. In terms of battery life, it is rated for up to 20 hours stock time. The phone is splash, water and dust resistant. It has IP68 and IP69K certifications. Under the hood, it packs a MediaTek 8 core 12 nanometer CPU. In terms of memory, it has 4 GB RAM and 64 GB SSD storage and it can be expanded by utilizing that micro SD memory card slot with up to 256 gigabyte card. There is a one rear camera, which is a 13 megapixel Sony sensor, and there is an 8 megapixel camera at the front. In terms of camera specifications, it is not very impressive at all. Even the video settings, you are limited to 1080p 30fps, but we'll have a look at how it performs, you know, photos and videos, we'll check both. Every port on this smartphone is protected by a seal and we'll have a look at how that works. Check this out. So this is the charging port. You just have to kind of pry it open and there's your USB type C. So yeah, that's, uh, you know, protecting it from any dirt or water getting in. And the same goes for the cart and SIM slot. Let's see if I can open it. Yes, it is possible to do it with just your hands and uh, no tool necessary. I can even remove the SIM card tray. Check it out. It supports two SIM cards and that's the space for the micro SD card if you want to expand your storage. The 3.5 mm jack for your headphones is located at the top of the smartphone. I must say that it fits in my hand quite nicely, but do note that I do have above average size hands. And you can use a passcode or face unlock to unlock your device. Let's have a look at what kind of accessories we get inside of the box that come with the smartphone. Check it out. This is a one meter charging cable, well, with the data transfer, USB type C and USB A on this side. Yeah, so that's one meter or three feet. A 10 watt charger. And this right here is a pick. You remember how I used my nails to pry open these ports? Yeah, you can use this pick to do it instead, you know, just to make it easier. And uh, that is about it, because uh, the rest of the stuff is just all sorts of manuals and instructions and uh, safety prompts warranty card as well. So that is it. A screen protector comes pre-applied out of the box. So let's check out some day-to-day -day activities that you may want to do and just check if uh, they are smooth or no. For example, let's open up messages. Yeah, everything seems to be pretty responsive. And uh, notes for example if i want to uh, do a note a test note how to test a phone 
All right. Let's open up YouTube to check out media consumption. There is only one speaker and it's located right here. Yeah, I'm not sure how well that will work, so let's check it out. Video right here, we bought everything in a store, and you guys really like the video. So now we're doing it again, but with five stores. You really want to buy everything in a store? I'm being dead serious. We want to buy every single thing in your store, and we will pay the price. It's all for sale, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to help you pack it or anything? Uh, just put it all in the cart. <laughs> Must say that videos do look quite nice. Of course, this is not like a, your usual Samsung or iPhone flagship experience, but I can see myself, you know, just watching videos like this. No problem at all. 1080p quality. The UI is, well, it is responsive enough. Check this out. We switch between various sections of the app quite fluidly. If you want to open the camera app, it does load quite quickly. <laughs> there I am. Yes, hi. We are going to check out the camera a bit later though. For now, let's have a look at some other UI features. Yeah, not a problem at all. All the menus. Everything seems to be working just fine. Uh, let's go into settings to check out what is there. And this is running on Android 13. Yes, Android 13. And this right here is a custom key. You can customize it to do anything you want your single click, double click, and long press. For example, what I've done is I've uh, done single click. YouTube Music opens up, but you can use any app. And double click enables flashlight. You double click it again, and it turns off. That's uh, quite a nice feature, I must say. Okay, Google, what is the weather like right now? It's 57 and mostly cloudy. Today, there will be showers with a high of 57 and a low of 50. Okay, Google, tell me that in Celsius. It's 14 degrees Celsius and mostly cloudy. Today, there will be showers with a high of 14 degrees Celsius and a low of 10. By the way... No, thanks. I don't need any more information out of you. <laughs> yeah, as you've seen, um, it works quite well. I am very pleased so far with uh, the way this system is running. But one major thing is, can it handle games? Let's start with something simple and work our way up the stack. So, Geometry Dash. Yeah, it's working quite well. <laughs> I'm not good at it. But okay, this game works fine. Block Blast. Next. As you can see, loading time is fairly quick. Let's do Classic. It is responsive. did experience some lag there just now. But everything seems to be working fine. Paper.io is uh, 
from what I've seen, one of the most popular games right now. So let's open it up and see how well it runs on this phone. Yeah, it's... I can see some problems <laughs> starting to creep up. It is far from perfect. There's a bit of lag there every now and then. Okay, because of the ads, I had to close that game. Uh, yeah, it is playable, but I wouldn't say that it is a perfect experience in paper.io. So does that mean that we are starting to see limitations of this chip on this smartphone? Let's find out. Next up, let's see how a more serious game will play on this smartphone. This right here is League of Legends Wild Rift. And I'm going to set everything to low, but the FPS, I'll keep it at 60 FPS just in case, if we are going to ever see that kind of performance out of this device. But everything else, as you can see, all the eye candy is turned off. I must say that the menus don't seem particularly responsive or smooth. Yeah, as you can see, you press something, it takes a long while to load. So right off the bat, it is not the most pleasant experience. Uh, also considering the fact that everything is turned all the way down, the resolution, it's, it's not great at all but let's fire up a game and see how well it performs who knows maybe i'll be able to actually enjoy a game all right the loading time wasn't too bad actually so let's see yeah we are not gonna get 60 fps here I see the FPS drop below below 30 during team fights. Yeah, the FPS is staying at around 30, I would say. And I can't really say that this is a pleasant experience. It is not smooth at all. I can't really aim properly. I mean, even with this resolution, with this low resolution, the FPS still manages to drop below 30. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Sometimes it even... the game is just... seems to be pausing. It is that bad. We're struggling. We're struggling to have a good experience. Hold on. Where are you going, guy? Come on, you didn't have to do that. I can't protect you all. Oh my god, he's trying to get it. He's trying to get our allies. Yes. I'll heal you. Get around. I'll heal you. Yeah. Oh my god, that lag. That lag right there. It's like... The moments like this, when you really need the performance to be smooth, the game does this. Well, it's not the game's fault, but... It's more of a fault of this device, to be honest. From the... From everything that I see, but I think we're gonna be able to... Oh my god, I got a kill. <laughs> I can't believe it. And we're gonna win. And we're going to win. Let's get it. Yes, yes. Ah, I'm very surprised that I actually managed to pull off this match. Because... Oh, there were so many stutters. It was like stuttering the performance was dropping below 
20, I believe I've seen at some point, below 20 FPS. So yeah, as far as some serious gaming goes, this device is not it. I mean, you're not gonna be enjoying a game like this. I, I didn't enjoy this match at all. Aiming was janky because the FPS was dropping. Uh, the performance overall was, I mean, it is, you, you can kind of play it, but it is not enjoyable at all. Yeah. Sticking to something like Tetris or card games, Solitaire, um, simpler games, that is fine, but anything more serious than that? No chance. There's just no chance at all. This is stabilization test, handheld. No, no holders, no selfie sticks. Just holding the phone in my hand and walking, well, at a normal pace, actually. Not running not trying to shake the camera or anything and uh, yeah on the preview window it doesn't look good uh, this is a good example of uh, well, somewhat a low light environment but during the day because as you can see oh my god my hand is absolutely white yeah as you can see that is the end of the tunnel and well Obviously, there's stuff there, but you can't really see anything. Let me bring you over to this side. Well, it's the camera is doing a better job with actually showing what's uh, going on on the other side of the tunnel in this direction. I assume that's because there's like a larger area. This right here is a difficult scene to process for any smartphone camera. Just due to the sheer amount of foliage, which translates into like lots of small details. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Let's do a fairly quick turn and check out the other side of the path that I'm currently walking on. This is the Carpenter's uh, Road Lock that has been restored. It's just some information about its history and how it works. That's the lock right there. Gate number one and gate number two is there. And that's the history. It was built in 1934. Now let's test the front camera. I'm holding the phone at an arm's length, fully stretched out. So, yeah, I can see that in this position, it's actually doing quite well. But let's check out. Like, let me get some, uh, some some sky into the frame. Yeah, that's, that's when the problems begin <laughs> and everything falls apart once you introduce some, you know, light into the scene. Bright light. And it's not even bright. As you can see, it's like really dark clouds in the sky. Although I'm not quite sure if you can actually see it in this footage, but... Those are some dark rainy clouds up there. And in the preview, I can see that it's just white, no gray, because it's, 
those those are some dark gray skies that is the upcoming victoria and albert museum of art design and performance and uh, just behind it that building is university of arts london yeah oh my god it just started raining <laughs> But yeah, as you can see here in London, even though it is the beginning of November, some trees are still green and some are turning yellow. I really should take cover from this rain. Surprisingly, the photos are actually somewhat usable. The level of image quality is still below optimal and I wouldn't recommend you to use this camera to take photos for your Instagram. But at least it works, unlike what we've experienced trying and failing to record a usable video. This right here is a case that offers additional features as well as additional protection to the X12 Pro. There is a clip and there is also a carabiner. This item is not included with the phone but can be purchased separately. Check this out. Uh, this is what the carabiner attached looks like. And there is also a clip. So. You can kind of clip that onto a belt. Here's what it looks like attached to the phone. Yeah, it offers additional protection at the back, also on the corners. And it can be removed as easily as that. There you go. Another accessory you can get is a mount. It is universal, compatible with 5.4 inch to 7.2 inch phones. And here is what it looks like. Yeah, it is big, it is bulky, but it should hold your phone tight. And here are all the parts that come with it and the tools to assemble and also instructions that are quite clear and well illustrated. In conclusion, the Armor X12 Pro is a smartphone with very limited capabilities. It can handle basic tasks such as calls, texts, YouTube and other simple apps, as well as simple games. However, it cannot handle any remotely serious gaming. The camera is also poor, struggling to focus even during the daytime and offering poor image stabilization. I would not recommend this phone for recording your experiences while out and about. But it does offer a lot of protection against drops, dust and water. That is what it was designed to do. Still, it's a shame that its other features leave a lot to be desired. Let me know your thoughts on the X12 Pro in the comments below and like the video if you found it helpful. It was I, Vadim, 
Until next time.